Good afternoon. We will begin with today's Assembly Budget Subcommittee hearing on Education Finance. Please call the roll. Mr. McCarty? Here. Chavez? Here. Irwin? Here. Kim O'Donnell? Thank you. Today we will be hearing the May Revise overview from the Department as well as the LAO and the Department of Education specifically related to the K-12 portion of Prop 98, the community college piece we will hear tomorrow, so if you're here for that. Uh, certainly, uh, the, uh, the, the governor's budget and, and this May Revise create, creates a, a good start for us in education funding, recognizing our priorities to fully fund the local control funding formula, as well as look at other issues to help our public school system. There, there's still some, some lingering issues that we'd like to, uh, to address. One is the administration's early Childhood Education Block Grant. As you know, the subcommittee rejected this proposal in, in April, and one of the issues that we wanted to focus on is the fact there isn't enough money in the current uh, system to fully fund access to all kids who want to participate in pre-K in California. So that's something that we're going to be looking at addressing going forward as our final package comes before us next week. And with that, we also have one, one item we're going to hear today for an action item. The rest is informational. So with that, we will begin with issue number one, the only vote-only item. It's the Department of Education, issue number one, proposal to eliminate reporting requirements. Are we going to hear them? Okay, so for this, we're just going to take a, an action. Do I have a motion on this? I so move. Second. Okay, motion and second on the vote-only uh, vote only issue number one. Please call the roll. Mr. McCarty? Aye. Chavez? Aye. Irwin? Aye. Kim O'Donnell? Aye. Okay, thank you. We'll begin now with the items to be heard. Please come up. LAO, Department of Finance, Department of Education, and CTC. So issue number one is an overview of the governor's 2016-17 May, Re May Revise. Prop 98 and K-12 education proposals. We're actually going to have the Department of Finance go first, and then LAO, then Department of Ed and CTC. Okay, please begin. Department of Finance. Good afternoon, Lisa Marzinski with the Department of Finance. Um, the Sergeant at Arms will be handing out an overview, so I don't know if you want to wait till you get that. Sure. Okay. So I will briefly go over um, the May revisions to the Proposition 98 minimum guarantee in addition to the gov uh, changes in the governor's spending plan due to those changes. Um, the handout that you just received kind of summarizes both the Proposition 98 guarantee, different available resources, and on the back side are the, is the actual spending plan for, for both governor's budget and May revision. So in figure one, um, this shows the revenues at uh, May revision and also shows the new levels of the Proposition 98 minimum guarantee. Over the three-year period, estimates for revenues were reduced by $2.1 billion since the January estimates. These estimates were lowered mostly due to uh, lower personal income tax receipts and sales and use tax receipts as of April. <clears throat> but despite these uh, lower revenues, the minimum guarantee increased over the three-year period by $626 million. This outcome is largely due to result of the fiscal years in which these revenue, the revenue changes have occurred. So in fiscal year 14-15, the revenues are up $474 million, and Proposition 98 guarantee is up $463 million. So just as in governor's budget, 14-15 uh, remains a test one year. So for every new dollar of revenue, Prop 98 will receive around 40% of that. In addition, there's a maintenance factor payment that's being made. Um, the maintenance factor payment went up around nine, $290 million for a total of a maintenance factor payment in 14-15 of $5.7 billion. So in 14-15, the Prop 98 minimum guarantee is $67.2 billion. 
In fiscal year 2015-16, revenues decline, the revenue estimate declines by $1.7 billion. However, the Prop 98 guarantee only drops by $125 million. This is largely due to the fact that even with a $1.7 billion drop in revenues, we did not change tests. So we continue to be in a test two year, which is the same that we were in governor's budget. And test two years, the factor is per capita personal income, not revenues. So it wasn't going to respond to the changes in general fund revenues. And per capita personal income did not change. <clears throat> the only change that did happen was that due a little due to the decrease in revenues, we're making less of a maintenance factor payment, um, and that's why the decrease of 125 million. So instead of paying off fully paying off maintenance factor in 1516, which we estimated would be done at governor's budget, there's going to be a balance of 155 million in 1516. In 2016-17, revenues are estimated down by 933 million. This is, uh, year is a little counterintuitive. With revenues down, the guarantee actually increases by $288 million. Again, despite this decrease in revenue, we didn't change tests from uh, the governor's budget estimate. We're remaining in a test three year. Now, test three years do respond to changes in revenues, but the factor looks at the year-over-year -year growth in revenue. And since revenues are down $1.7 billion in 1516, and I don't want to say only 900 million, but 900 million in 1617, the factor actually grows. It's an increase in growth factor, which is why the guarantee goes up. <clears throat> so maintenance factor, we do make, uh, it increases our maintenance factor balance. Uh, we were estimating around 550 million in 1617, and it grows to 908 million in 1617. And that is also, that's largely due to a change in per capita personal income. So PCPI went up by about one point, and that increased the test too. Go, I'm sorry. Are you the maintenance factor. In I don't have it on this sheet. I okay. apologize. Gotcha. Next time I will put it on. Okay. <laughs> it's in my notes. So I, next time I will put that on there. I apologize. I thought about it, but I'm trying to squish a lot of information into one sheet. So, um, so anyway, then maintenance factor. It will be about, the balance will be 908 million and the change is due to the fact that test two also increased and the difference between, so the difference between test two and test three got larger. So some other notable changes, actually let me just direct you to figure two. Okay. So in figure two, this just summarizes all of the available resources. The first column is where we were at governor's budget. There was 5.4 billion in available resources from all the different sources. And a May revision with the increases in the guarantee and the other technical adjustments, settle up changes and one-time Prop 98 savings, there's an additional $509 million to spend for a total of five, almost $6 billion. Figure three at the bottom of the page just summarizes though the resources and the spending into one time and ongoing. And on the other side of the sheet is the actual spending plan. It's very detailed and it actually shows each item and each proposal. I will only highlight a few, um, and but uh, just to note that I do have people available that can answer detailed questions to any of the proposals that, you, that you've seen here. So um, on the one-time spending, which is on the top half, it's broken into K-12 and community colleges. For one-time spending, uh, the governor's proposal continues to prior prioritize um, discretionary funding, one-time discretionary funding to K-14 schools um, to pay down or to offset any K-12 mandate debt claims. So for K-12, through uh, the increase is $135 million for a total of $1.4 billion. Uh, toward mandate payments, and for community colleges, there's an additional 20 mi $29 million included for a total of $106 million. For one-time spending, the priority continues uh, to be the local control funding port formula and moving towards full implementation. To that end, there's an additional $154 million uh, included in this plan for a total of nearly $3 billion. This moves the local control, f this closes 55% of the gap and moves the local control funding formula to 95.7% of full implementation. Just a few other one-time um, spending to note included in this plan with 100 million of the one-time Prop 98 savings of the proposal is to uh, fund a K through, 12, K through 12 school facility emergency revolving loan program. 
Um, this is program would expedite financial assistance for um, for school districts who need immediate facility repairs. Uh, the the idea behind this is to really get the students back into the classroom as soon as possible, and it would be for LEAs and school districts that don't have uh, the available resources to do it expeditiously. So um, additionally, in one-time funding below the hundred million, you will see a twenty-eight point five million, and on the community college section, one time there's a thirty-eight point six million. These are um, backfills for property tax estimates. As we um, were doing the property tax estimates, it occurred it, it special education and community colleges taxes were coming in lower than what we had expected, and this would um, hold them harmless to those losses. As for uh, one time or sorry ongoing proposals, um, there is. Oh, back to one time, I apologize. Community colleges, I forgot to mention, they have a 20, we included in this plan a $20 million uh, one-time online education proposal. Um, the community colleges currently have over 11,000 online courses, of which only 100 are available uh, broadly for all students. This would help set up the system to make more of those online courses available to more students. <clears throat> Um, additionally, there is a part uh, also of the um, early education block grant proposal that was uh, mentioned in the governor's budget. Uh, included in this plan is $20 million of spending, $10 million one time, and $10 million ongoing. That would go to the county offices of education to assist in implementation. Um, the Im implementation date has been moved back to 1718. Uh, there is uh, specific details of this can be found in the education trailer bill. Um, additionally, for one time, the um, community colleges, there is a $75 million uh, base allocation proposal. Ongoing base allocation proposal, I apologize. So other than um, the COLAs, which I'll mention is the COLA was 0.47% at governor's budget and at May revision, the COLA is 0%. Uh, this is due to a change or a reduction in the U.S. state and local implicit deflator, which is what we use for our COLA, and that has been brought down due to ch lower oil and farm commodity prices. So with that, um, if you would like any more details on the spending plan, uh, people would be more than, uh, my colleagues would be more than willing to answer your questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Trevitt. Yeah, I was wondering about the uh, <clears throat> the uh, money for the emergency repair revolving loan program. Why did we move that out of Office of Public Schools over to the California Department of Education? So, I would say that this is a, a new program, and it wasn't necessarily the exact identical emergency repair program. It's already similar. Um, but we felt that the Department of Education would be appropriate to administer that program. So uh, is, is there more staff going over to the Department of Education to do this? No, at, at this point there isn't a proposal to provide additional staff to the Department of Education. What do you think about that, Department of Education? Thank you, Deborah Brown, with the Department of Education. Um, yes, yeah, so as we're looking at this proposal, we, I mean, we do support having the the uh, program because we do see that there's a need for it and would like to, as we explore it, look to having um, resources for administrative costs. So we do see a need to um, address that. So you're thinking that you're going to need administrative costs? We're still reviewing it, but I think we will need it, yes. Uh, and for the record, it's Chris Ferguson with the Department of Finance. <laughs> I think something's going on. <laughs> Thank you. LAO? Thank you, and uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Kenneth Capon with the Analyst's Office. Uh, earlier this afternoon, our office released a brief uh, analyzing the May revision proposal. That should be with you now. No um, May revision would be complete without a counterintuitive story about Proposition 98, so I'll speak to that first. As the administration mentioned, state revenue across the 1415 through 1617 year is down $2 billion, and the minimum guarantee is up $626 million. That, uh, in broad strokes, relates to the timing of those revenue changes and the interaction with the Proposition 98 formulas. 
In 2014-15, the minimum guarantee really remains in catch-up mode from the last recession. The state is making a large maintenance factor payment, and the minimum guarantee is increasing virtually dollar for dollar with new revenue. So 14-15 revenue goes up 474 million, and the guarantee is up by almost the same amount. In 15-16, the situation is reversed. The Proposition 98 formulas that year are linked to growth in the overall state economy, and they're less dependent on changes in state revenue. And so because the minimum guarantee is not all that sensitive to changes in state revenue, a revenue drop of $1.7 billion only reduces the guarantee by $125 million. Finally, in 1617, as you heard, the minimum guarantee is up 288 million. That increase reflects slightly higher year over year growth in state revenue compared with January. In other words, because 1516 revenue dropped by 1.7 billion, the growth into 1617 is even faster than what we thought in January. And that faster growth requires a corresponding increase in Proposition 98 funding. I think the, again, the broader story here is that state revenue changes, state revenue increases happen to occur when the guarantee is highly sensitive. The decreases are concentrated in 1516 when it's not all that sensitive. Included in this brief, our office also released our own independent forecast of Proposition 98. Uh, you can find that by turning to figure two on page four. That compares the estimates, our estimates of the minimum guarantee with those of the administration. As you'll see in that figure, our estimates are up uh, about 200 million in 1415, virtually identical to the administration in 1516, and up 106 million in 2016-17. So across that three-year period, uh, we estimate Proposition 98 funding at 205 million above the administration. Those differences primarily relate to differences in our estimates of state revenue. We estimate state revenue is up a few hundred million above the administration, both in 14-15 and 2016-17, and that brings up the guarantee by a corresponding amount. Uh, compared to the overall amount of funding at stake here, uh, our estimates of the minimum guarantee really are very similar, and I, that's primarily because we and the administration have a similar view of how the state economy and state revenue will perform in the near term. Both our office and the administration assume a continuation of the current economic expansion and falling unemployment. Given that we have differed from the administration by billions of dollars uh, at past May revisions, our estimates this year really are remarkably close. One difference I will highlight has to do with our estimates of local property tax revenue. Uh, you may remember that in January we differed by the administration by around a billion. Um, we were a billion higher than what they were estimating for 15, 16, and 16, 17. Uh, compared with January, our estimates have come down a little bit. The administrations have come up a little bit. And now we are only um, about 350 million above the administration. As um, you know, local property tax revenue for schools offsets the state's general fund obligation to fund Proposition 98. So this doesn't mean more revenue for schools, but it does free up a little bit more that you can use for any state priority. Finally, turning to our specific recommendations, we have a chart on page 38 of this brief that walks through the proposals we analyzed. I won't walk through that whole chart, I'll just highlight a few of the larger proposals. As you heard earlier, the administration proposes to increase funding for the local control funding formula by 154 million. That would accelerate the LCFF to 96% of its target level, and we'd recommend you adopt that proposal. The administration also proposes to provide 135 million uh, toward the K-12 mandate backlog. Paying off that backlog has been a high priority for the legislature and the administration uh, for the past few years. But most of the funding in this proposal would go toward districts without any outstanding mandate claims. We'd recommend you adopt the dollar amount but pursue a more strategic approach to paying off that backlog. Uh, finally, as you heard, the administration proposes $100 million for a new revolving loan program for emergency repairs. We recommend you reject this proposal. We think it is unnecessary given that the state already has a facility hardship program. Uh, lastly, um, we'll point out the administration proposes um, three million to start replacing SACS, which is the state's financial software that school districts use. We recommend you reject this proposal. We think this uh, approach would circumvent the state's traditional process for IT oversight, and we don't think the case has been made for doing that. 
uh, I think that covers our high level take on the May revision. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Before we get to the Department of Education, let me ask you on the on the revolving loan program, is your recommendation to to nix it because there's an existing program or because you don't think or maybe it's both that, that you don't think we should use Prop 98 dollars for facilities. It's primarily, I think we don't think this program is necessary really from any fund source. The state already has a bond funded program, the school facility hardship program. Um, the administration, I think, has raised some concerns with how that program works. We'd suggest you start by, um, if that's a concern, maybe t tweaking or refining that program before creating a new one. So is, is the LAO agnostic to the issue of using Prop 98? Dollars for facilities. I know that's a big concern of people in the Ed Coalition. Know that we have so many other K-12 needs. That's a good question, and I've heard that too. Over the years, the state has gone back and forth. We funded some facility programs through Proposition 98, and others outside of it. We didn't look at that specifically for this analysis, since we were rejecting the program, recommending rejecting the program for other reasons. But we could certainly look at that if um, you're interested in. Um, some more of the considerations that would go along with that. Okay. Thank you. Department of Education. Good afternoon. Deborah Brown on behalf of State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tom Tarlickson. I just make some initial comments. Um, we would uh, we appreciate in years such as this when Prop 98 ensures that K-12 is a priority in the state budget and we are seeing increased funding for our students. The non-98 is not seeing those similar um, increases because of slower revenue. Um, we do support the ongoing fund, the um, increase in funding for the uh, local control funding formula, so the continued investment in LCFF. And we would also reiterate our support for um, increasing the funding for the after school program as we noted in a previous hearing. We do see that that $73.3 million is important to um, help uh, try to um, increase the rates for the after school program and really see that as uh, helping improve the full day support for our highest need students. Um, on the one-time funding, we also continue to support the administration's dedication towards paying down the, um, the uh, state mandate. We would also um, uh, see some consideration for some uh, one-time funding for school districts for standards implementation. In these initial years, um, as we've noted before, um, it's important that districts have the resources to, to um, uh, um, buy, the, buy and provide the professional development, instructional materials that, that they need um, so that they can get up to speed with the new standards and the new investments. Um, on the early education proposal, um, we, we do appreciate the administration ha did some really extensive outreach and, and really considered the feedback provided. And, and in particular, we appreciate the focus on quality that the new proposal has. But we, we do uh, believe that the proposed changes do uh, fall short in addressing some of the key issues, um, particularly around ongoing funding and um, elimination of um, TK or taking away TK. As a, as a grade, and we can talk about that further. Um, as noted, we do see a need for the emergency loan uh, program and would um, ask that there uh, be some funding provided for administrative costs to run the program. In particular, the, the goal of this program is to really address um, uh, emergency needs for facilities and, and being able to get that, that bridge funding to uh, districts as quickly as possible is, is a critical component of that program. Um, and I think with that, we can answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commission on Teacher Credentialing. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joshua Speaks. I'm here representing the commission. Uh, Dr. Sandy um, regrets not being able to attend in person. Uh, as you all know, the governor's proposals for dealing with the ongoing teacher shortage include two proposals that impact the commission. The first would provide $10 million in general fund money for one-time grants of $250,000 each to California post-secondary institutions to improve on or develop four-year integrated teacher credentialing programs. The commission would be tasked with developing the request for proposals, evaluating applicants, and dispersing the funding. Integrated programs would provide candidates with a quicker and less costly path to a teaching credential than an entirely post-baccalaureate credentialing program. The second proposal would provide $2.5 million in funding for the California Center on Teaching Careers, which would be a statewide recruitment center administered by a local educational agency. The commission would be tasked with developing a request for proposals, selecting an agency to administer the center, and working on them with implementation. California previously had such a center from 1997 through 2003 when the funding was implemented due to budget constraints. 
Uh, the Commission is already working on new teacher data dashboards, which we have uh, previously shared with this committee and which we believe will help to inform and focus the work of the new center. Uh, the, cur <coughs> the current teacher shortage is an important challenge to California schools, and uh, we believe that both of these proposals um, have the potential to make a positive impact. Uh, the Commission stands ready to implement them, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Comments from committee members or questions on these items? Ms. Irwin. I, I just had a, a question on the Teacher Recruitment Center. So it's one-time money, two and, a half, two and a half million dollars. Is that, how long is that expected to last? Um, we, we don't have significant details on the, that, what the intent for that program is yet. So we, we don't have an estimate worked up as to how long those funds are going to last. But um, we would hope to put together some efforts that are, are sustainable long-term, cost-effective long-term things. You know, it doesn't take that much money to run a website or um, efforts like that. All right. Thank you. Okay. No other questions? These are informational items for today. We'll come back with an action next, uh, next week. I, I had my question answered earlier. We'll now have the uh, public comment for this section. So please line up in the middle there. I'm Estelle Lemieux with the California Teachers Association, but here today representing uh, the labor part of the Education Coalition. And with me, I have Sarah Sarah Botches with the California Association of School Business Officials representing the management side. So overall, uh, we have to say we are pleased with the Prop 98 uh, May revision. Uh, but we do have a couple issues uh, that um, we have concerns about. Uh, I will speak to the first, and it's one that Assemblymember McCarty brought up, and that's the $100 million revolving loan fund. Uh, we do believe that these funds should be from the general fund uh, that, for the most part, as far as I can recall, we've never used, um, since I've been here in the last 20 budgets, uh, for, uh, Prop 98 dollars for uh, purposes of facilities. Prop 98 dollars are to be used for direct services with our students. So uh, we have some serious concerns regarding uh, that proposal. Uh, in addition, we do support the both the teacher uh, proposal, the uh, uh, four-year blended program for credentialing, that uh, 10 million dollars from the general fund, and also for the CalTeach centers, the two and a half million. It's a, it's a start. Uh, we, we could use more, but it's a good beginning to and, and acknowledging the fact that there is a major teacher shortage out there in a crisis, and we need all the help we can get to recruit uh, qualified teachers. And on the early education block grant program, although we commend the administration for the in-depth uh, listening sessions that took place over the last two months, this is still a major, uh, massive policy shift that needs to have a long-term conversation. Unfortunately, the, the proposal does not address growth, funding, eligibility still is very, um, it needs to be tailored, access and facilities, understanding where our LEAs are coming from in terms of providing 50% of services for uh, the state preschool services. So we have major concerns with this proposal. Thank you. Deneen Micheletti, representing the California Alternative Payment Program Association. We support the increased funding for after-school programs. Um, I'd like to align my comments with the block grant proposal um, previously stated. Additionally, we have concerns that in the May revise, the governor's block grant eliminates local planning councils and gives that responsibility as part of this new block grant. That's very concerning to the uh, programs that support our poorest families. 
those local planning councils do the capacity and they look at the, the access issues of our poorest families. We think getting rid of those LPCs and moving that to LEAs without having the existing infrastructure in, included in a real way is really going to diminish access for working poor families. We also see that if we block grant the TK and preschool to the LEAs as proposed, we really are putting barriers up to our poorest families and those coming through CalWORKS. Currently, the existing system meets their, their needs. That is, the needs are outside of just the school-based programs. So with that, thank you. Mr. Chair and members, Brad Strong with Children Now. Actually, I have a question. If it, uh, th I have a, um, comments regarding an augmentation that's also listed in the agenda but wasn't discussed at the table. Would it be appropriate time to... On, on um, Proposition 47, um, we were pleased to see the governor increase the savings estimates, and but the savings estimates are still t far too low, we believe. Um, the addition represents an increase of only 10% of the savings estimated by the Legislative Analyst's Office. Um, and the uh, allocation for proposi Proposition um, 47 should, should be increased. Um, with respect to the draft trailer bill language that we, we recently saw that's been circulating, we do have, we have provided um, suggested amendments and are extremely concerned that the current language uh, identifies appropriate uses of the funding, but, but uses including but not limited to language such that it could, could arguably be used for, for just about anything unrelated to reducing the pipeline to prison. Um, our amen, amendments would tighten that loophole. We've given them to the, um, the Senate um, Pro Tem's office is, is, uh, has a sta uh, is staffing a, a work group for that, and we've provided that language to them. Thank you. Good afternoon, Martha Albers. I'm with AXA, the Association of California School Administrators. Um, like many of us here in the room today, we have been um, paying close attention to the revenues over the last several months. And even though the state overall funding is going down, we're pleased to see that the Prop 98 um, is slightly increasing over the next uh, year. Uh, we support the governor's proposal to increase funding for LCFF. Uh, we also support the governor's increase for the 110 discretionary dollars to be used at the local level according to local needs. Um, and we're also very pleased to see the governor inclusion of the teacher shortage um, bills. Uh, we know there's a lot of um, uh, different strategies that can be pursued, but we, be, we believe it's um, the, uh, a good start in the right direction, uh, the $10 million for the four-year integrated degrees and the $2.5 million for the Cal Teach programs. Um, the only two concerns I'll note for now, uh, we're still reviewing the proposals for the early education block grant. Um, the one concern we have heard from our members over and over is the elimination of traditional kindergarten. Um, so I'll note that for now, um, and we'll provide more comments about the block grant itself. Um, later on. Um, and then in terms of the $100 million for the facility grant program, uh, the only concern we have about that is regarding the use of Prop 98 for school facilities. Uh, we believe that if it was a general fund, um, it would be something that we would uh, per perhaps enter entertain. But for the time being, we're just concerned about the use of Prop 98 for school facilities. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments from committee members? None. Just a, a few uh, parting comments. So certainly the overall May revise didn't leave us with a lot of additional revenue like we had last year to look at some of these priorities, but it's not to say that these issues are forgotten. I think what we're going to do is take a look at what we have available in one-time and ongoing Prop 98 resources and take a look at things like our Prop uh, 49, the ACES program and after-school funding. We know with the with the current minimum wage increase, not the one we just passed, but the current one and the, and the increases in local jurisdictions across California that were really uh, rationing access here and there for after school programs. Certainly the teacher shortage is something that, that we're going to be um, looking at as well. And we're uh, grateful that the governor put in there a couple issues that we had been talking about through this subcommittee, but we think there are a couple other things that we could address. And then with the uh, pre-K, um, you know, as was noted during public comment, I, I guess it's twofold. One is that uh, I, I concur with, uh, with AXA's comments that TK is working. You know, why throw the baby out with the bathwater? We just had this great AIR report that shows that kids who go in a TK cl classroom compared to a control group of kids who were e even in no preschool or a state preschool program are, are really doing very well when they enter kindergarten. So I'm not sure why we'd throw that all away. And then secondly, with, with the whole notion of our state preschool program, there's you know, 30,000, 40,000 low-income four-year-olds that don't have access. There's no 
uh, plan to ensure that they will have access to so to put a lid on the whole system and cap it and then spread it around uh, without talking about quality and facilities and a lot uh, certainly doesn't make much sense. It didn't make much sense when we rejected this in, uh, in April and it doesn't make much sense today. So I think that th those, those are our thoughts going forward for those few issues. And again, um, we will be back in a matter of days to go over uh, the rest of the plan and then we will uh, come back next week with our May revise and final budget closeout uh, proposal. Thank you. We're adjourned.